We are now going to look at part two of interest calculations. So, first thing we can be expected is to change the simple interest formula. We have the formula there, the standard formula, I equals P times R times T. Just as a reminder, it means that the interest is equal to the principal multiplied by the rate multiplied by the time. And you know how to turn any of those into the subject of the formula. If we want P alone, we have to divide both sides with R times T. If we want R alone, we'll have to divide both sides with P times T. And if we want T alone, we are going to divide both sides with P times R. And here you can see I have done it like that. But sometimes we get something interesting. The principal is asked, but we do not have the interest. It is not given. And then this is the formula that we need to use. So this now becomes the third formula that you have to memorize. And it says that principal amount is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus RT. Okay. This is the way I prefer to remember it. Your future value A is bigger than your interest. So when future value comes in, in this formula, it kicks the interest off its perch. Interest falls to the ground. Its little cap goes over its eyes. It turns into a 1 and we add that to RT. That's the way I remember it. You can do the same. Let's have a look at how the simple interest formula can be changed in a, a test or an exam. And these are the typical questions that you will then get. It says, how much must you invest to earn 100,250 Rand interest after four years at 6.5%? So what you have here, you make the principal the subject of the formula. You were given the interest, you were given the rate, you were given the time, so you can simply replace the values and you can get your answer. Next one. How long must you invest 125,000 at 7.5% to yield 388,000? Well, here we have to be careful. First thing we have to do, if we have both the principal amount and we have the future value, is we must calculate I. Okay, so let's first calculate I. I is the future value minus the principal amount, which is then 263,000. Now we can change the formula to make time the subject of the formula. It will be equal to I divided by P times R or just PR. And in this case, I use the division sign and not the line. The reason for that is if you're going to put it into your calculator, you're going to press the division sign. So I'm just showing you how you would do it on your inline calculator. Well, we have that 263,000 to interest. We've just calculated it and we can divide it by the principal multiplied by the rate. And once again, here I've just showed you that 7.5%, if we change it into a decimal, is 0 0.075. If you have an inline calculator, you can possibly stick to the 7.5%, although you might have to say 7.5%. And then the answer that we get here is 6.33 years. Now, 0.33 years is really a third of a year. And a third of a year is four months, so you would also be able to express it as six years and four months. Two more examples. How much must you invest if you need a yield of 320,000 after 10 years at eight and a quarter percent? Now, this is that one where you are given the future value. You are looking for the principal. There is no interest amount given. And now A comes in, kicks I to the ground, turns it into a 1 that we add to RT. Then we simply replace the values. Now uh, I've done that here. Uh, everything is given. And we get our answer there. And in this case, it's 175,000. 
342 rand and 47 cent. Another one. At what rate must you invest 10,000 rand to double your money in eight years? Now, here you have to do a little bit of logic. If you are going to double your money, then the interest and the principal must be the same. That's the only way you're going to double your money. So here we have now R, our rate as the subject of the formula, divided by the interest divide, is equal to the interest divided by PT. Um, our interest and our principal being the same. And then if we replace the values, we get an amount here of 0 0.125, but we have to express it as a rate. If we express it as a rate, it means we must express it as a percentage. So we simply go and we move our comma two places to the right, and we see that the rate at which we investing it to get this uh, effect is 12.5 percent so that is changing the simple interest formula but sometimes we are required to change the compound interest formula and this is typically the way it is asked in the exam it says how much must you invest if you need a yield of 78,000 after 96 months at 4.55 percent per annum compounded half yearly now, the first thing that you will have to see here is it's talk, talking about half yearly, year there, and months here. So the first thing, we can't work with months and years. We must work, work in years only. So 96 divided by 12 is eight years. So it really is saying here it is invested for eight years. And but, yes, now the but, it is compounded two times a year because it's compounded half yearly. So it's not just compounded once a year like normal, it's now compounded twice a year. So what do we do? Well, first thing we do is we make P the subject because we need to find out how much we must invest. So uh, we are going to divide the one plus I to the power N um, by uh, A by that. And uh, then we have to divide both the interest by two as well as the period by two. So this here, 4.55%, first we turn it into a decimal, it becomes 0 0.0455. If we divide that by two, we get 0 0.02275 like we have there. And or that must be added to 1. So we get 1.02275. We've divided the interest by 2. And we must also now multiply the period by 2. The period was 8 years. Now we multiply it by 2 and we get 16 periods. There are 16 half-year periods in 8 years. And then we get an answer there of 54,423 rand.